In this demonstration, we're going to see how we can model an electromechanical actuator using Simscape Electronics. The system we are working with consists of a DC motor that drives a lead screw via a worm gear. The lead screw produces linear motion. The motor is controlled by a motor servo amplifier. We need to use simulation to determine the required size of actuators in our system. We will use Simscape to do it. The model we will build will look like this and we will see in a three-dimensional animation provided by Simscape Multibody that our actuator can extend and contract. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. To get started we will enter the command SSC new into the MATLAB command window. This opens up a new Simulink model with the settings recommended for Simscape. The first thing that we'll need to add to our model is a voltage source. So I will click in the diagram and type DC voltage source and I can pick from the sources available to me. I'll set the voltage to 24 volts. The next thing that we'll need in our circuit is a ground. So I will click and drag to create an ideal electrical connection and then type ref to get an electrical reference. This represents the ground in our electrical circuit. Simscape models use simulation technology above and beyond what is available in normal Simulink. To have access to key settings, we will add the solver configuration block. The next thing that we'll need is a block that can generate a pulse width modulated signal. I will click and drag to create an ideal electrical connection and then type PWM to get a controlled PWM voltage source. This block can create a pulse width modulated signal which we will use to drive our motor. The next block we will need is an H-bridge circuit. So I will type in H, select H-bridge. This block represents an abstract model of an H-bridge circuit. I will connect the PWM pin to the pulse width modulated voltage block and the rest of the pins can be connected to ground. We don't intend to, for this simple test, run the motor in reverse. We'll simply connect these to, to the ground block. These blocks can be configured to run in different simulation modes depending on the level of fidelity that we need. We can run the model with pulse width modulation simulation mode where we have the pulse width modulated signal or we can configure it to averaged. When we configure these to use the simulation mode averaged, the voltage that is applied to the DC motor is a, will vary smoothly between the supply voltage and ground depending on the required duty cycle. We'll set it to averaged to have a quick simulation. Now we'll enter the motor itself. I'll type in motor and I can select from all of the different motors available to me. I will select a DC motor. I'll connect the positive pin of the motor to the plus side of our H-bridge circuit and I will connect the low side of our motor to the ground and I'll connect the low side of the H-bridge to our ground as well. Now the electrical portion of our system is complete. We now need to work on the mechanical portion. These two ports represent the two mechanical connections of our motor. This port represents the connection for the housing. I will click and drag to create a mechanical connection and type in reference to attach it to a point fixed in space. This port represents the shaft of the motor. I will click and drag and then attach it to a gear block in order to increase the torque that the motor can produce. I'll then convert this rotational motion to linear motion by attaching a wheel and axle block. Finally, the translational motion of this wheel and axle block we will attach to a simple mechanical load. We'll simply attach it to a mass. At this point, our model is complete. We can run the simulation and see how it behaves. Right-clicking on the mass block and selecting View Simulation Data will open up the Simscape Results Explorer. If I go to the mass block, I can see the amount of force applied to the mass and the speed at which it is moving. I can see that my actuator is strong enough to move this load. I can also see the current that it required. If I go into the DC motor block and click on the inductor, I can see the amount of current that the system is currently drawing. So this is a very simple example with a very simple load. We have prepared a three-dimensional mechanical model of the aileron and we would like to test our very simple actuator with a more complex load. So I will delete the mass block and connect this mechanical connection to our three-dimensional mechanical model of the aileron. When I update the diagram, we can see the three-dimensional model of the aileron created in Simscape Multibody. I will now rerun the simulation and we can see how the system behaves and we can see that our actuator is not strong enough to move this. So we will make our actuator stronger by increasing the strength of the motor and we'll increase the 
mechanical advantage afforded by the wheel and axle. Now we will rerun the simulation and we can see that the aileron is able to extend in one direction. Double clicking on the wheel and axle block we can drive it in the other direction by resetting this parameter and we can see that the actuator moves in both directions. If we reload the data from the simulation we can see we are still drawing about the same amount of current so we have adjusted our components properly in order to get the simulation to move without drastically altering how the system behaves. In this demonstration we have seen how we can use Simscape Electronics to design an electromechanical actuator.